Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a July wrap up, which is pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna be doing just a video talking about all of the books that I read in the month of July. I had a lot of hits, a lot of misses, a lot of all right books, so I definitely have a lot to talk about. So yeah, let's get right on into the video. One of the books that I read in July was To All the Boys I've Loved Before. This is by Jenny Han, and this is going to be turned into a Netflix film. This is actually the first in a series of three. I didn't really like the book, but I also didn't hate it. I was very lukewarm on it because I know if I was talking to Casey circa 2011 or 2012, she would have been all for this shit. I think I've just grown out of this style of YA and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, I've grown out of it. So I wasn't really too keen on it, but I also didn't hate it. So um, I do have a review up on it if you want to see a more comprehensive video of my thoughts. But all in all, I thought it was okay, um, but I definitely will be continuing the series. The next book that I read was actually one of the first ones I read in July, and I was so excited about this one. It's called The Lies They Tell. This is by Jillian French, and there was so much hype around this, and I was very caught up in the hype as well. Um, it's basically about this girl who is trying to solve a murder that is starring, or not really starring, but is centered around a really rich family. And anything with that kind of scandal, I'm immediately drawn to, especially in the YA genre, because I find sometimes YA can make it a bit more light and not as dark. But I really was let down by this. I loved the first 90% of this book, but I hated the ending. And because of that, it was just a really frustrating read. I think it's almost worse when you have a book that is so good, but could have been so much better if they just changed a few small things versus an actual bad book. So while I would recommend reading it because I think that the characters in this, um, especially, what the heck is his name? Tristan, I loved Tristan in this book. I would definitely recommend checking it out for him. I wouldn't actually go buy it, maybe get it from like the library or something, but there's better tellings of this kind of story out there. Another book that was a big letdown for me was The Seasoners by Janet King. This was very promising in terms of scandal and drugs and partying and all that kind of stuff. It follows a girl who is basically like a brand ambassador for a clothing line and all of the brand ambassadors live in Nantucket for the summer. And there's it's alluded that there's going to be this massive drug thing, but then it ends up just being so small scale and so boring and really didn't have much to do with what the synopsis leaded it to be about, which was something that was really frustrating. And it was honestly probably one of the worst books I read this summer. I do have a full rent review on it if you want to watch that, because I don't really want to speak too much more on it, but I really, really didn't enjoy it. I would not recommend it at all. Another book that I read that I actually don't have with me because I've lent it to a friend is called In Her Skin. Um, I had mentioned in a random video that I was very, I didn't really know how to feel and then I put out a video where I recommended people to read it and some people were a little bit confused. My initial video where I said I didn't really know how to feel was kind of explained in my review but not enough for, I guess, it to make sense, like the disconnect. Initially, after I'd finished the book, I had loved a lot of aspects of it, but there were areas where I almost felt like I was going, okay, well, it's a white, so that's okay. And I think now, by the time I had actually filmed my review on the book, I'd realized like it's a YA book, you can't fault it for that. And overall, it was a good book. So that's why my thoughts didn't really change because I did say I liked it in the first video, but just to kind of clear that up, I did actually enjoy the book. There are areas where you're kind of like, okay, I can tell this is a book. And there's a lot of other areas where you kind of have to let things slide and the lack of detail slide for the sake of just pushing the story forward. But overall, I thought it was a really fun read. I definitely recommend reading it in the summer because it's really good. <laughs> Another book that I don't have because I've given it to a friend is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Universe. You guys recommended this book literally on every single video I would post for a straight like two month period. And I finally realized I'm like, okay, they all want me to read this book, I'll read it. I'd never heard of it before and I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was such a beautiful book. I think that reading it in the summertime really enhances everything about it and I'm so glad I did. I was like weeping in public reading this book, which is super embarrassing, but Overall, it's a beautiful book. It's just stunning, 10 out of 10. It's about two boys that are learning to find themselves and love themselves and then things happen. I don't want to give any spoilers, but oh, it's so well done, so well written. And now that I know that he actually was the one who wrote They Both Die at the End, I'm a lot more motivated to read that book. I've had that literally sitting on my shelf right there for the past like two months and I just 
haven't really had the motivation to actually read it, but after reading Aristotle and Dante, I am all about it. The next book that I read in July is also one that I've given to a friend. I'm sorry, I should be putting pictures up. I hope I'm putting pictures up. Um, but the next one was Social Creature. This was a great book. I really liked it. If you liked Goo by Carolyn Kemps, you will be all over this shit. It's about a girl who is very poor. She's living in Manhattan. She's got a shitty life and she somehow stumbles upon one of New York's elites who ends up having a very dark past and current life. She just has a dark underbelly to what she kind of presents and it just gets really crazy really fast and the things that you think are going to happen don't happen and something else happens and it just it's honestly, it keeps you on your toes the entire time. And it was such a fun read. I could not recommend it more. Another book that I read in the month of July that I once again don't have because I've given it to a friend is Behind Her Eyes. And this is by the same author who wrote I Was Dead for 13 Minutes and Now I Want to Know Why. I can't remember her name right now, but it was incredible. Like actually incredible. I'm still reeling from the end of that book. I'm going to have a review coming up soon, but that was by far, by far the best thriller that I've read this year. And I'm not being dramatic. I swear to God, it is so well done. And I did see mixed reviews on it and I can understand why some people may not like it because it takes a turn that is just so random that if you're not down for that kind of turn, you'd be completely turned off from the book. But I loved it. I had no idea what the hell was gonna happen. It was so incredible and I thought it was just great. The writing was super easy to just kind of dive into and never want to leave. It's a very like start and finish in one go kind of book and I could not recommend it more. Honestly, if there's one book, one book I could recommend, read that one. The next book that I read was Brain on Fire. This is by Susanna Callahan or Cat Cal, 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 Jesus. Kahalan, Ka why can't I pronounce that? Kahalan, Susanna Kahalan, Kahalan, okay, whatever. This is about a girl, this is also another one turning into a Netflix film. I'm actually really excited for it though. I jumped on the bang wagon, or band wagon for this one a little late. And this is about a girl who one day, and this is a true story. She was a reporter at the Post in New York and one day just goes psychotic and no one knows what's going on and this book is actually her detailing her entire experience, but what's so impressive about it is the fact that for a lot of her time during the hospital, she actually doesn't remember what happened. So since she's a reporter, she actually, after the fact, interviewed all of her family members that were there, all of the doctors, and pieced together everything to create. It was an, originally an article in the Post and then inspired this book. and. It's just her whole story is insane. I'm gonna try to do a review on this because I really think this was an incredible book. And because it's one of those that you kind of know what's gonna happen when you're picking it up, you just, it kind of makes it easier for me to do just a straight up discussion video because I think it was just such a great book. The next book I read is This Love Story Will Self-Destruct. This is by Leslie Cohen. I really like this one. It was very like, someone said it was very When Harry Met Sally and it totally is. It's nothing very, you're not gonna be like, wow, this is the best book I've ever read. This is a great summer read if you're looking for just a kind of cheesy romance with likable characters. I wanna say that this is kind of the book equivalent to watching Set It Up on Netflix. Very like, just a throwaway rom-com set in New York and it's cute. Like they're not the same kind of story, but you get the same kind of feeling and enjoyment from reading this as well as watching that movie, if that makes sense. Another book that I don't have because I lent to a friend is Suicide Notes from Beautiful Girls. You guys know that I love Lynn Guidengarten's writing so much and I really, really enjoy this book. There's already a review up on my channel for it. I just thought it was incredibly done. It is just exactly everything that I love about Bad Girls with Perfect Faces is present in this book, but even better. I really actually like Suicide Notes from Beautiful Girls better than Bad Girls with Perfect Faces. So. If you're choosing between the two, I would choose the latter. But if you can, just go to the library for free and pick them both up, enjoy them both. They're incredible. Finally, the last book that I read this month was Radio Silence. This is actually by Ashley Osman. I literally finished this two days ago and This book is really good. And I don't wanna to say too much because I'm gonna be doing a full review on it because I really did like it. But 
I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did, and I also didn't really research the book, which is not like me. I usually try to research what I want to read so that I know that I'll like it. But this one, I saw a lot of people talking about it, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to place the order. I'm going to have faith in the process. I'm just going to order the book, and I'm going to read it. And as I was reading it, I was like, oh shit, like this is something I would have never picked up if I'd actually looked into it, and I'm so glad I didn't. But I really did enjoy it. A review will be coming soon. Fuck, this is a good book. Like, really, really good. Anyways, guys, thank you so, so much for watching today's video. Let me know what you guys have been reading this past month, as well as your TBR for the month of August. It blows my mind that it's literally almost the end of summer. But yeah, let me know what you guys have been reading and what you want to read. And if you want to follow me outside of YouTube, you can. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, as well as Goodreads, which are all Casey Ayonzo. And you can like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And I will see you guys in the next one.